This video is sponsored by LD Player. Hi, welcome back to another World Flipper video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about progression or like a beginner's guide. What should we do? Where should we push for? What are kind of like the key priorities? And like, to be honest, there are so many freaking resources that the JP community have pulled together. And so obviously this video would not be possible without the JP community and all of their different guides. And so thank you guys so much. Massive shout out to you guys. And so yeah, in this video, I want to direct you guys to all of these different guides, but also kind of like run through a couple of them because like I would say that they're quite daunting right and the reason that they're daunting is because like they have done a really really good job at putting together like really in-depth guides or like just really really dense guides right and especially as a beginner I think it's just like a little bit overwhelming and so like let's run through a couple of these and let's see where we go however before we go into the community created guides I do want to show you guys something real quick which is uh this guy over here so you see how there's this launch gala portal down here if you swipe uh yeah eventually you will actually find this guy over here which is Stella's WF World Flipper 101 and so it just escaped me so let's go back and so if you actually click into this this tells you or it teaches you a lot of the different mechanics me personally I think this is really helpful especially if you skipped a lot of the tutorials like I do think that you'll be able to grasp a lot of the mechanics if you just would like watch a lot of these it really will help your gameplay like look at this like how to build skill chains like half of you probably don't even know what skill chains are right and to be honest I don't even blame you because like there are just so many freaking mechanics in this game and so yeah, before you get into any of the community content, I really would highly recommend just like flipping through all of these. It's probably just going to take a couple of minutes. However, with that being said, let's jump back into the community ones. And so what I have in front of me is the progression guide. So this guy is written by uh, Nemi Pekin Pies. Crimson and Drist. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, dude. But again, massive shout out to these guys. And of course, all of these resources will be down in the description below. But essentially, this is kind of like your ultimate progression guide. So it's like taking you from early game to mid game to end game. And me personally, I think this is a really, really in-depth guide. And I think it captures a lot of the different things that you really need to know, especially because like, like stuff like this, right? So that is laid out pretty well. So when I go into units and then I look at my team over here, I click into it. I'm like, oh my God, there are just like so many things going on here. And so let's talk through a couple of these things, right? So the leader buff, the first character in a party is set as the leader. The leader buff will affect all characters that fulfill that condition. So if I scroll in a little bit more, you're going to see this leader buff over here. It's fire dragon style for Wagner. And actually seeing this view over here, I do want to show you guys where this is from, because in my opinion, this one is like a really freaking good resource. And if you guys do play alchemy stars, you guys are going to be very familiar with this layout. And the reason is, is because it's made by the same dude. So like, if you guys recognize this one, this is the Alchemy Stars collection tracker. And then we've got the list view and you can see like all of these skills and stuff like that. There is one for World Flipper as well. So that's freaking awesome. So looking through all of these, like what you have is a leader buff and then you've got the skill, the skill cost, and then the abilities down here. So obviously only the leader will apply their leader buff to the rest of the team. And more often than not, these leader buffs are like really catered towards mono team. So for example, uh, we've got Yuna over here. When 10 or more combo, Thunder characters attack plus 90%. And so it's very, very clear that it's in your best interest to run these mono teams right and like we'll get into team building in a sec on the other hand down here we've got skills so this is the one where like where you swipe or whatever and essentially these are kind of like your actives that you can activate like when you have the full gauge and then speaking of the gauge we've got the skill cost down here so like over time you're going to charge up the gauge up to 300 and then when you hit 300 you'll be able to use your active skill and then lastly over here we've got abilities in which you can actually unlock these through like the ability trees so uh let me just get into here and then in here i can click into one of these units so so can I like hold click that? And so as you can see here, Clarice, and there's a mana board up here. And so you want to click into the mana board. And honestly, this is probably like one of the first things I do want to talk about. And so look at this demo over here. It's so freaking good. So you use mana and materials to actually upgrade these guys. And then you've also got ability cores to upgrade the, or rather unlock abilities, right? Like seriously, like look at this demo. It's so freaking good because like, it's just really descriptive. It's really, it's all animated. The production value is really high. And like, again, I really recommend you guys like go through all of these different demos. Anyway, I'm gonna close this off. And so as you can tell, this is probably like one of the highest priorities in the game. This is like where your units are gonna be getting their power or like their progress from. And so you can see like these guys over here. So you've got ability three, ability one, two, three, and these correspond to these guys over here. So if I look at this over here, we've got Clarice. So let's have a look for Clarice first. And uh, so 
we can see here, learn ability three when set as your main unit. And so you can see there's a main tag there times five. This unit destroys an enemy plus 7.5% to skill gauge. And so that's just got an extra little bit over there. And so what you will realize is that it says 7.5% to skill gauge to self over here. However, on this side, it says own skill gauge plus 15%, not 7.5. And the reason for this is because like you need to upgrade these little stars to be able to get it to like the 15. So this one over here, 13.5 etc. And so here is like where we kind of talk about our priorities, right? So you can tell that we have a whole bunch of different skills and then we also have like these like mini extra pathways or enhancements to those skills. The priority here is pretty clear. You need to unlock all of these major skills first, so abilities before you go ahead and actually like get these enhancements. And the reason is because every time you get one of these guys, like it's just really freaking game changing. Well, it's, okay, it's not game changing, but it's a lot more game changing than like these guys over here. Because as you can tell, like look at this, this is just going from 7.5% up to 9%. Like that's just adding 1.5%, which is not really impactful at all. However, on the other hand, if we had this one and instead we went to go get this one as well. And so ability one is going to give us plus 40% to skill gauge and 5% skill damage. You guys can already see how impactful one of these major abilities are. And so like, obviously you need to go farm mana, you need to farm like all these necessary materials just to get those up. And so I would say that, especially in the early game, this is like one of your main priorities to level up and to like get your abilities up as well. So on the note of leveling up, let's return and go back to the unit. So this guy over here, as you can see, level up. Level up and uncap your units here, gain EXP just for playing the game. Yeah, so again, like read all this, watch the demos, it is what it is. And so as you can see, we've got this blue currency over here and so we can slap that on, level up, level up, blah, 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 blah. and so as you can see, my Clarice is level six now. And so obviously this is kind of like your other major way of gaining stats. So like this it's in your best interest to farm this currency and the green currency. And so that's a pretty nice segue back into the guide. So if I pop back over here, I, I hope you guys will appreciate this one, World Flipper Collection Tracker. Honestly, like this guy, whoever made this thank you so much dude for alchemy stars at least it's like my favorite website but i see it for world flipper as well oh dang anyway moving on back to this guy over here so leader buff we've already covered this and then we've also got main and unison so essentially like honestly guys i think you guys can read through this it's pretty straightforward i'm just going to highlight like the most important ones so for example this one again well uh, when they have the main tag so like these guys over here these will only be uh actually activated when they are in the main slot and so if i was to come back over here and go back to the units uh you're going to be able to see that we have mains and subs right so these three guys over here are in main slots and then what you can also do is like put in sub units over here however it is still not unlocked because i have not progressed very far as you can see and so there are some like early game tactics where some people are like oh you should level up only the abilities one and two for your sub dps's or like your sub units and the reason is because three is redundant you don't really want to level it up because of the, like the main skill honestly it's up to you i reckon we're going to progress really fast and i reckon we're going to like zoom everywhere so like yeah but again let's get back to the sheet over here and so like weapon souls and like how to obtain what like it's really straightforward guys have a look through all this it's really freaking good i think stuff like this you can technically just skip over because like uh it's really really good to know but like if it's gonna make your head spin don't worry about it so yeah but honestly in this guy what i really want to talk about is oh penetration like read through all of these effects like it's really freaking good especially um floats float is like one of your green teams or your wind teams like attributes or it's kind of their strength right and then on the other hand you've got penetration which veron features okay let's keep moving there's just too much that's catching my eye right <laughs> uh okay so you've got skill chains okay this is what i wanted to talk about and so essentially this is like pretty much 100 percent in line with what i was talking about like we want to farm the green mana and the blue mana the blue mana to upgrade your characters levels and the green mana to get through those ability blocks however the general advice is that you don't actually go into like those farming stages to get this green and blue mana. And so ideally what you do is you actually farm it through bells. And so let's actually get into that section. So yeah, farming elemental materials, this is super, super important as well, but let's get into the bell raids. So this is actually gonna be a major source of your green and blue mana. And so let's just read through this quickly. The bell icon at the upper left side of the screen allows you to join multiplayer raid and event battles. You can start receiving backup requests after clearing chapter one of the main quest. And so if I was to show you guys in game, uh, if I go into home you should see it up here so you can see that 20 out of 20 and sorry guys so i just want to clarify like this 20 out of 20 is your stamina this bell here is the actual bell raid icon and so this is really important
important, right? Because like what this means is that you need to clear your chapter one ASAP so that you can do your bell raids ASAP as well. Because again, they are going to be a massive source of the green and blue mana and you really don't want to be like sinking your stamina into like those crappy uh, these farming dungeons, right? Anyway, moving through all of this, uh, yeah, look look at this. There's 52 pages of this. I really cannot cover this. Um, it's, it's just really incredible. But yeah, the next thing I want to show you guys is this one over here. So the progression map. So this is actually going to go through each of like the different bosses and like the different types of equipments that we can get. And so therefore it kind of forms like a farming loop, right? So you can see like it goes around here and then back over here, especially because there's kind of like elemental weaknesses, right? Like it makes sense. It's a logical order to actually like do that loop. And so this is really reminiscent of like Dragalia Lost, another Psy Games game. And I mean, like it could be borrowed inspiration. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this progress map I think is really good. It gives you like a really great detail, like in terms of like where you're gonna go. Uh, but with that being said, let's just move on. And so guys, let's take a quick break because I do have a word from our sponsor. LD Player is a lightweight modern emulator that supports essentially like every mobile app or game that you can think of. It's got features like sync operations, easy APK installs, one tick root, high frame rate modes, like this actually supports 120 FPS. Me personally, I've been using LD Player for a while, especially for games like Punishing Grey Raven and now World Flipper. But otherwise, it's smooth, it looks good, it feels good to run, it's it's cool. And so if you guys would like to check it out, have a look down in the description for a link to go and download it. Massive important point over here, farming co-op versus farming solo. Farming co-op is highly recommended because you get more drops in co-op than you do solo. And on top of that, the only time that stamina is consumed during co-op is when you are hosting a room or joining a non-mutually followed room. And so what this means is that you want to get as many friends as possible or you want to follow as many people as possible and have them follow you back. Unfortunately, only following people is not good enough. You need to make sure that they are following you back. That's what it means by mutually followed. And so I think you'll find that a lot of the farming, a lot of the grinding is going to be centered around farming co-op. So be ready, guys. Anyway, moving on, I think that's already pretty good like uh I, this is just gonna get way too dank you guys are just gonna be like even like honestly even i'm looking at this i'm like Phew. but again this is ultra detailed so just like look through this i think it actually takes you all the way to end game so as you can see down here but again this is a beginner's guide this is trying to just like get you started and so i'm just gonna leave this here i think we have covered enough from this guide over here so again another massive shout out to the people who put this together because this was a really solid effort so thank you again nemi peckin of pies crimson and Drist. And so with that being said, let's move on over here. So World Flipper Global Release Reroll Guide. I really like this and I did cover this in my reroll guide, but essentially like this is your five star tier list for your rerolls, but like this is not really what I'm going to be using it for today. What I really want to talk about is like these descriptions down here because like it's a lot of context and a lot of rationale as to why they are given that rating. And in my opinion, I think all of the rationale is really, really sound. I think like there's a lot of logic to be followed here. And if you read through like a whole bunch of these, I think you're going to start getting like the logic as to what is strong and what is not. And so like, as we go into like the further characters, you'll be able to kind of like do your own evaluations, just like from learning from experience, like reading through all of these and you're going to be like, oh, this new upcoming character. Yeah, it's pretty decent. And so let's take a quick example. Marina, Marina on release is pretty mediocre. She provides multi-ball and power flip support. la di da da but because multi-ball damage is bad, we need to wait for Golem EX class for more fire power flip support. And so this this already is teaching you, but because multi-ball damage is bad, and obviously this is not always the case, but this is one of the reasons as to why Marina is mediocre. But yeah, I think this is a really great read. Uh, this is just gonna like tell you kind of like what the strengths of your characters are and what exactly you're looking for to synergize with them. But like, yeah, this, this is a really good guide, but th there's something at the bottom that is really freaking good. And it's this guy over here, good four and three stars to look out for while re-rolling because this also gives a little bit of description as to like some of the four stars that you're looking out for and why they are good. So for example, you got Jin and Annie over here and like these two actually show up in the fire comps so much and there's not really any explanations like in the fire comps or in the comps at all. However, this document does give you a little bit of context to all of that and so like that again, is why I would really recommend reading through this. And so just working through this, weapons do not pull unless whale. So yeah, that sounds about right. It sounds like every game ever. Notable future units. So this is another really freaking good 
good one. However, especially from like a beginner's guide point of view, I would say kind of just ignore this one because uh, whilst it is kind of teaching you like which ones that you should save for or like which ones you want to be rolling for, this is not really like your primary cause for concern, right? Because like generally speaking, you're going to have rerolled or like you're going to be like settling on like some nice account. And then from then on, you're going to be saving gems up until one of like the busted banners and then you're going to be rolling on it. I think don't worry too much about this one. You're just going to get overwhelmed, especially by like the sheer number of these freaking limiteds. But what I do want to point out is that there are a lot of limited banners. So as you can see, look at that. We've got pre-con coming in with freaking Kiaru. And then we've got other things like summer, first anniversary, pre-Annie banner, zombie land. Like there's just so much stuff going on. However, let's move on. And I think that's actually it. So yeah, that is this document covered. Hopefully that was kind of helpful. But again, a massive shout out to, I believe this is Underlight's document. Okay, so we have one more document to cover and that's this one over here, Global New Players Guide to Teams. So I believe this is still written by like pretty much the same people. This guide is maintained by Peckin of Pies and Nemi. So again, massive shout out to these two. The amount of work that's gone into each of these is like really freaking good. So this is the one that I really want to show you guys. There is actually a version of this that is applicable to the JP server. And so if you do see that, I actually, I think there's a link to the global server one. And so get to the global server one because the JP server one, like obviously they are like one and a half years or whatever ahead. And so it's not really applicable, especially in our situation. All right, guys. So this is probably one of the most useful resources like that exists right now. And essentially these are team skeletons. So what it's saying is like, you've got some core like listed over here. And then you've also got some recommended units down here to fill up the rest of the team. And this is fantastic because this actually goes through like a couple of different types of builds. So for example, this is a fire team, but like clearly it is focused on skill damage. The core of this team is Clarice and like skill damage, I think generally speaking, skill damage early game is probably the play here. And so if I was to look at using this comp, I would be like, oh, okay, I have Clarice. I don't have any, unfortunately, and I also don't have Shasusu. <laughs> What the frick? So in a nutshell, it's not like I can't use this comp. It's more like, okay, any is pretty core to this. To be honest, any is core to like every single fire team. As you can see, any, 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 any. And so, yeah, I think you guys get the idea, right? So, but like, say, let's say we had them, right? Like, so say I had Clarice, I do have any, and I do have Shasusu. And so all that's left is to pick one of these mains over here as my third main and to pick two of these as the unisons. Unison one going into here and then unison three going into here, right? So if I have this guy, he'd go here. And if I had this guy, he'd go here. Very straightforward, I think. And then what we have down below that is the weapons and ability souls. But yeah, I think it's quite easy to navigate this. And like, this is why I said in the reroll video, you're generally speaking, gonna be looking for kind of like pairings, right? Over here, you're gonna be looking for Cerise and Any, although Any is a three star. Over here, you've got Philia and Celti, and then you've got like these units over here. And then you've got some of the dark units over here with Bersedia. But yeah, this is a great sheet, not only because it's giving you kind of like the cookie cutter of builds, but it also like kind of goes through each of the different types of comps. And what I mean by that is that if we go down through the red column, you see this one is based on skill damage, AKA Clarice. But if we were instead to take another approach, so for example, Hanabi, we can actually use the multi ball power flip. And so what I really mean by that is like this kind of team is centered around multi ball power flips. And so that's kind of like your play style for this one over here. You just kind of need to be aware that this is where it's going. Like this is what this team is surrounding. But yeah, otherwise like they've got some really nice commentary down here. I do wish that it was a little bit more detailed, but honestly, I can't ask for any more. Like this is already a great, like they're giving us evaluations and some rationales as well. What I do want to point out is that you should be looking through each of these and like, I I think that there are a lot of, how do I say it, common units. And what I mean by that is that there are a couple of units, especially in each of the elements, each of the verticals that actually come up a lot. For example, you've got Old Mate Varon over here, you've got Varon over here, and then you've got Varon over here, and then you've got Varon over here, and then you've got Varon over there, and then you've got Varon everywhere, right? And so this kind of flexibility pretty much tells you why he is rated so highly. So from a reroll target point of view, he is an S. Like if you look around the sheet, he's actually not used as a main unit anywhere. He's used predominantly as a unison one. And then the same goes for Shasusu. So Shasusu is another three star. However, she is pretty freaking busted. And the reason that she is busted is very apparent when like, oops, wrong one. Uh, it's very apparent when you just read her skills, right? So let's go down to Shasusu. 
Yasu. And you'll see over here, party skill damage plus 60%. But really, we're looking at these guys down here because like that requires her to be the party leader, which is not exactly what we want. So down here, increase leader skill gauge by 30%. She is a battery, my guys. She is a battery. And then on top of that, grant leader skill damage buff 120% over 5 seconds. That's freaking cracked, dude. But not only that, she is also giving the leader attack plus 20% and when her own skill activates, leader attack is gaining another 10%. She's batterying, she's buffing. She's batterying, she's buffing. And I think she is one of the very few characters, if not the only character that actually does this in the game. And so you can already see like why she is so important. If we come back over here, she is a battery for skills to do skill damage. And if we keep looking across, she is also here. She is contributing to that skill damage. She is allowing you to spam, spam, spam. Another skill damage one over here. She is featured. Another skill damage one over here and she is featured again. And so yeah, that kind of gives you the idea like whenever there is skill damage involved, you're probably going to see Shisusu. Anyway, I think we've talked about this one enough, but like just again, look at the common units, look at which units are going to be used over and over, and you'll know which ones are like high priority. So for example, this boy over here, he shows up in like every freaking team. Okay, not every team, but he shows up in like three of the four teams, right? On the other hand, we've got Annie who shows up in every single freaking team because she is like the best fire healer. And so all of this information should be captured anyway, if we remember uh, in this table down here, uh, over here. And so as you can see, we've got Jin, we got any like these are the good four and three star characters and like by this kind of logic you can kind of expect these guys to always be showing up as well for the other ones but all right guys i think that's enough for this one and so the next thing i would do want to talk about is this banner rating over here and so the images are broken again like all of these documents are under heavy load but like there are typically banners over here which will help you identify them but essentially this is giving you a rating for each of the banners that are popping up and so this gives you a really good indication as to whether you should save and hold or if you should go all in. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of time from launch before we can like go and sink some pulls into one of the good banners. For example, one of the first ones that's like decently rated is this Noeen banner. And then we've got Cypher down here who is one of the best water supports. So again, so much rationale over here. It's really freaking good. However, if you are a hoarder, if you are really, really strong in the HODL game, then you can look out for these 10 banners. So these 10 out of 10s. And so what I do want to point out is that this is the 29th of February, 2020. And and so that is about about three to four months. I, I say about three months, sorry. And so if you reckon you can actually hold out for three months, like that is that is the move. Like if you are in it for the long term, because it's then that limited hell starts. You got a 10 out of 10 there. You got another 10 over there. And then you got another 10 here, 9.5 and another 10. Because from then on, it goes absolutely crazy. Like all of these banners, like from three months onwards is really freaking good. And so that's what I wanted to talk about there. Otherwise, um, we've got events over here, but like that probably, there's not enough detail over here. But honestly, guys, I feel like I have bombarded you with resources, bombarded you with a lot of things to read and a lot of things to think about. And so why don't we just let you marinate in it and maybe we'll pick it up another day. And so with that being said, let's start wrapping up this video. And so I've got a secret message for you guys and that's TYJP players. Because the JP players have paved the way for the global players to actually have a good time and like we have the foresight and the investment opportunities and without all of this foresight well documented in a couple of different like really good guides i think it's really easy to make mistakes and so thank you to the jp players that have put together these guides and so if you guys could drop that secret message down into the comments below i would really appreciate it because it means you've watched the video up until the end and so thank you guys so much but otherwise please consider a like a sub a comment a follow you guys already know what it is if you would like to support the channel we do have a couple of affiliate links down in the description as well as a membership thing but otherwise as Clarice once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye